Hello and welcome back to uh, Honor Topics and Physics. We're getting into Chapter 13 in the book, uh, Gravitational Interactions. Um, there are uh, a couple different forces that you guys are pretty familiar with uh, that can pull on an object without touching it. Uh, you know, which is kind of it's kind of strange. Um, what are some forces that uh, that could pull on something without touching it that you know of? Uh, well, gravity is one. Uh, magnets are another, um, and there are there are others. Uh, electric charge, which is static thing, you're probably f familiar enough with that. Uh, the the strong nuclear force and the nuclear and the weak nuclear force, you're probably less familiar with, but the, those also do that. So Newton uh, kind of was bothered with this idea that that these these things like gravity, you know, between masses and and magnets. Uh, could pull on another object without touching it, even through a vacuum. Uh, very, very uh, strange to him. So he came up with this idea of a field. Uh, for example, a gravitational field. And you've probably heard of this before. Uh, and, and so the idea is that this mass, like the Earth, creates this gravitational field which alters the space around it uh, and then that, that field interacts with uh, objects that are, that are within the field, like the moon. Uh, so that way the, the, uh, the moon is in contact with the Earth's gravitational field, so therefore it's, it's a little bit more palatable for him. Uh, these are uh, force fields, um, not the ones that glow and, and shoot you know, laser bullets off of it, but, but they are force fields uh, nonetheless. Uh, we, rep we represent force fields with arrows, uh, often called field lines. Uh, these are gravitational field lines. And these field lines represent the gravitational field around the Earth. Uh, the arrows point into the direction, or point to the direction that a mass placed in that field would accelerate. So notice they're all pointing towards the center of the Earth. Um, and, and so that's pretty simple. Um, now, the field is the closest uh, near the surface of the Earth, uh, and it gets weaker as you get further away. What happens to these field lines uh, as you go from closer to a uh, greater distance? Um, notice these field lines separate. They get further apart. So, <coughs> the, uh, the field lines are the closest where the uh, field is the strongest. And the field lines are the furthest apart, uh, get further apart as that field gets weaker. Um, now, how are we going to measure the strength of the field? In physics, we like to measure things and, and have numbers um, that go along with things. Well, all we have to do is put a, an object in that field and measure the force acting on it. Okay? So, for example, a one kilogram object on the surface of the Earth feels a force of 9.8 newtons, or about, about 10 newtons, okay? Um, now, a 2 kilogram object at that same location would feel twice the force, or 10 newtons, twice the mass, twice the weight, okay? But the thing is, the, the field didn't get any stronger because we're measuring the field strength at a location. We just have to use something to measure it with. Uh, so somehow we want to we wanna divide out or take away the, uh, the, the influence of the thing we're using to measure, okay? Uh, so what we do is we divide out uh, by the mass that, that's used to measure the field. So the, um, the field strength at a certain location is equal to the, the gravitational pull on my test object divided by the mass of that test object. Um, and, and that's how that's taken uh, into account. Okay. Uh, now, field strength, uh, which is, a, uh, is equal to force divided by mass. Okay. So it's the force on object divided by its mass. And since uh, force equals mass over acceler or mass times acceleration, well, there's a lot of Newton stuff in this, uh, in this, in this year. And there, Newton was, was quite the uh, influential person. Okay, so we'll substitute in MA, okay, and we'll divide by the M's, and we'll get that the field strength is equal to the acceleration of an object. And that's all it really comes down to, is gravitational field strength is equal to the acceleration of an object placed at that location. Okay? Um, now we can plug in uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation into this. 
and we're not going to be doing much with this. I'm just kind of showing you, showing you this. Uh, so we can plug in uh, universal law of gravitation, big G, M1, M2 over R squared. And what's going to happen is this M2, or the mass that we're using to test, okay, gets divided out. And the field strength or the acceleration is equal to big G times the mass of the object that's creating the field divided by our distance from the center of that uh, uh, or center of that object squared. Okay, so um, compared to the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth, how would the acceleration compare on a planet that had twice the mass but the same radius? Okay, so this is the equation that we're using. Okay, uh, big G, uh, M is the mass of the planet. Uh, or the object that's creating the field, and R is our distance from that center. Okay, well, if we double the mass of the Earth, or whatever planet we're talking about, we're going to have twice the uh, the field strength. We're going to have twice the acceleration. So rather than 9.8 meters per second squared on the, on the planet Earth, the, uh, the, uh, the acceleration on that planet would be 19.6 meters per second squared. It'd be a very different place. Okay. Uh, let's say we had the Earth, it had the, the same mass, but let's say it swelled up to three times the radius. So picture the Earth swelling up so it's now three times the radius. Well, uh, and I'm on the surface of that planet. Well, I'm now three times as far away from the uh, center of that, of that planet. So this, this R is going to become a three. And don't forget that, that it's squared. So the acceleration due to gravity on that planet would be one ninth. Okay. Uh, let's say we had uh, the same mass, but now it's one half as big. So picture the Earth shrinking to half the size, but with the same mass. So it's getting twice as dense. Um, what would happen to the uh, force of gravity? Well, now I'm twice as close, or my radius is one half. So if I take one half and I square it, I get one fourth. And what do you get if you divide by one fourth? You get four times. So the uh, the gravity on that planet would be four times as strong as the uh, planet uh, as as compared to the Earth. Okay. So let's say it was five times as massive and one tenth the size. All right. Do this in your head. Do you have an answer yet? Probably not. Maybe so. Um, well, if we if we uh, multiply the mass times five, that's going to make this whole top worth five times. Okay. And if we do uh, divide by one tenth squared, well, one tenth squared is one hundredth. So divide by a hundredth, and you get one hundred. So it would be five hundred times as strong. So it'd be pretty strong gravity on that planet. All right, let's look at what happened would, would happen if you were to go inside the Earth. So let's say you drilled a, uh, a big hole that went all the way through the, uh, the Earth and out the other side, through the, through the center. And what, happened, uh, what would happen if you were to jump in? Would you fall into the hole? Sure, there's a hole in the, in the, in the ground. You fall into it, okay? Um, and you would accelerate towards the center of the Earth. Okay, all right. Now, uh, let's look at what, what would happen to the force of gravity on you and your acceleration as you fell. All right. So let's say we're halfway, and my computer's locked up. All right, the computer healed itself. Uh, so what would happen to the force of gravity uh, and your acceleration as you fell? So you're closer to the center of mass of the planet, but something interesting is going on. Part of the planet now is pulling you up, and the other part of the planet is pulling you down. Okay, so uh, which is stronger, the, the force pulling you up or the force pulling you down, based on the, the amount of the Earth that's doing that? Okay, well, certainly the force pulling you down would be stronger, but it's still being canceled, canceled out slightly by some of it pulling you up. Okay, so are you going to accelerate at 9.8 or a G, more or less? Well, that upward pulling force is going to cancel out some of the 9.8, so you're going to accelerate uh, at less. Okay, let's look at what happens if you're at the center of the planet. Okay, um, now is the force of gravity on you going to be really, really strong? Okay, well, you've got half of the planet is pulling you up, 
Okay, and the other half of the planet is pulling you down. Okay, those forces are going to cancel. So you're actually going to be no net force of gravity. Gravity is going to be a zero at the center of the planet. Okay. Now, if you were falling, would you stop there if the net force was zero on you? No. Remember, you would just stop accelerating. You are already moving, and you stop accelerating. That means you're going to, it's going to transfer to the other side. Okay. So go back to the acceleration halfway down. Uh, what would the acceleration be uh, halfway down? Well, it's really just g over 2. It's half the acceleration. Um, and and so, uh, so we've got g, half g, and then 0, as we said. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up our, our trip down through the center of the Earth. Okay, so gravity is 0 here, but we still keep moving because we're traveling quite fast. Okay, now we're going to cross, uh, we're going to pass the center of the Earth. Okay, and then now, okay, I'm going to be traveling down, but gravity is going to be pulling me up. What happens if you're being pushed the opposite way that you're moving? You slow down. Okay, so you would slow down and then come if you didn't lose any, any energy, which of course is, is unrealistic, but let's say you didn't lose any energy, you would pop out the other side. Okay, word. All right. All right, and if you weren't able to jump out, you would fall right back in and just continue yo-yoing up and down uh, the big the big uh, hole that you done. So uh, here's a video uh, that kind of goes you along. Wonder what would happen if you dug a hole from one side of the earth through the center, out the other side, and then jumped in? Before we show you, a few disclaimers. If there was any air in the hole, air resistance would slow me down. So let's ignore that. Earth's molten core is 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit. On the way past, you'd simply be vaporized. So, let's ignore that too. We would also have to ignore Earth's spin, which would make me ricochet from side to side down the hole. <laughs> and please don't try this experiment on the actual Earth. All right, here we go. I fall gaining speed as Earth's mass pulls me towards the center. 14 minutes into my fall, halfway to the center, and I've accelerated to more than 15,000 miles an hour. Here, there's only half the force of gravity than on the surface. So I'm still gaining speed, but at a slower rate than when I first jumped in. 21 minutes into my fall, and I'm at the center of the Earth, and going my fastest, about 18,000 miles an hour. As I pass the center, gravity now works against me, slowing me down. And by the time I make it halfway between the core and the other side of the Earth, I'm back down to about 15,000 miles an hour. It'll take only 42 minutes to make the entire trip to the other side, at which point I'll slow to a full stop. Just like when I started, all of Earth's mass will pull me back towards the core. Unless somebody catches me, I'll fall down the hole again and yo-yo back and forth forever. Thank you. No problem. Hmm. So, I have a good little video. Are there any questions on the video? Okay, if, if you raised your hand, you must not realize that this is a video. Uh, so, anyway, um, normally there's some questions on that, but since it's a video, we, we can't address those. Um, now let's look at a little bit more uh, related to uh, gravity approaching the surface of an object and what happens if you uh, go within the boundaries of that object. So. Gravity gets stronger as you get closer to the center of mass of an object until you go inside of that object. Okay, Once you flip and you breach the, uh, the surface of that object, gravity gets weaker and weaker and weaker. So the, the strongest gravity ever gets is on the surface of a planet. Okay, um, So and this leads into black holes and what makes them so, uh, so scary here. Uh, first off, what, how do we know that they exist uh, if we can't see them? And this was before they actually got a, a, a picture of a black hole, um, you know, a little while back. Um, the first picture of a black hole was, was pretty big fanfare. Uh, it wasn't a great picture. It was pretty low resolution, but it, it kind of looked uh, a very, like a very low resolution of this. Um, so what we can, people knew that black holes existed. Uh, or at least hypothesized, 
uh, because there were there were uh, massive objects, or and even that weren't that massive objects, that were orbiting very quickly around something that they couldn't see. Okay, they were orbiting very quickly around a dark region. So there had to be something there. There had to be a, uh, something called with mass, something with its force of gravity, uh, but it could be detected. So people hypothesized that there were black holes. Uh, how do they form? Well, stars are, are basically really, really hot gas, and they constantly uh, burn that gas, not through normal combustion, but through uh, nuclear fusion. Uh, and as they start to run out of fuel, as the, uh, as the fuel gets used up, uh, the stars start to cool. And then as they cool, the atoms and the, and the nuclei and the protons and whatever uh, all starts slowing down, and as that happens, it starts to condense, okay? Um, and as they condense, they get smaller, okay? And if there's enough mass in that star, um, that star collapses under its own gravity, and black holes can form, okay? So uh, what happens to the mass of the star as it collapses? Okay. Well, nothing happens to it unless, it unless it explodes or ejects some mass along the way. But uh, the mass of a black hole is pretty much the mass of the, the star that created it. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit less. Okay. So black holes aren't any more massive uh, to start out with as, uh, as the stars that made them. Okay, and we don't think of the stars as necessarily that scary. What makes a black hole so so spooky? Okay, um, so if a black hole doesn't have any, any stronger universal law of gravitation and force, okay, why is the gravitational field so strong? Well, the answer is it, it isn't uh, uh, until it is. Okay, so if we look at the star, if we look at a star and the, uh, and the black hole that it becomes, um, we can get stronger and stronger and stronger gravity as we approach that star. But once we go within the boundary of that star, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Okay, uh, Black holes condense so that there's such a small fraction of the volume of that star so that we can get closer and closer and closer to the center of mass of that star without going in. And all the while we get closer to it, uh, that force of gravity gets uh, stronger. Okay. And uh, now this shows the gravity increasing linearly, and that's just because it was easier to do the graphics that way. Um, but remember, we get gravity gets stronger with the the square of the distance that you get within that. So um, the closer we get to a, a black hole, okay, within the boundary of that whatever created that 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 black hole, uh, gravity can get really 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 strong, okay. Um, when a sun collapses into a black hole, most scientists believe that it becomes infin infinitely small. Let's say that our own sun collapses into a, the same black hole, which is one trillionth the size. Uh, compare the gravitational uh, field strength at the surface of each. Okay. Well, if we get 10 to the 9th smaller by forming a black hole, that means gravity will be 10 to the 9th squared stronger uh, at, at its surface, 10 to the 18th times stronger. Okay, that is, uh, that's a big difference. Okay. Um, now let's say the, uh, the Earth was orbiting our, our sun, minding its own business. And let's say that the, the, that our sun could form a black hole, which it couldn't because it's just not enough mass. Um, what would happen to the Earth? If the sun, our sun, suddenly spontaneously formed a black hole, what would happen to the Earth? Okay. Well, the answer is nothing. Okay, Because gravity wouldn't be any stronger here at this location. I didn't get any closer to the center of the, uh, of the object. Uh, it didn't gain any mass. Um, and, and so the only thing that would happen is it would get really dark here and be really cold. Okay, so black holes aren't necessarily as quite as spooky as, as people think they might be. All right, so what I want you to do is uh, worksheet 13-1, and uh, good luck.